Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back to the channel. That is Deb Chanel's 48th World. Get into it now. Yes, subscribe to my YouTube, or YouTube channel. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to me, okay? Share my videos and like them as well. But you know what I want you to do is subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Like, like, like. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Okay, well, basically, we're going to get right on into it. My informant today is showbizcheatsheet.com, and they're coming up with a fabulous article headline to where they are saying the real reason why Phaedra Parks will no longer be employed with Bravo Entertainment or True Entertainment, okay? And at first, I like, okay, this is really all news because still Candy is refusing, I'm sure, to get the green light. <clears throat> to bring Phaedra Parks back on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. A friend of uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta, guest starring, or whatever. But she definitely don't want to see her full-time or part-time on the show. Okay? And it's stemming back from when she had said, uh, when they found out that Pe uh, Phaedra was the one that put that bug in Portia's ear. And to me, it was wrong for Portia as well as Phaedra to have done that. But, again, it is what it is. But I also had to think and give my perspective on this issue to see why Candy will not accept it or be um, downgraded to think anything else of not letting Phaedra back on the show. Now, again, like I said, I'm a little perplexed and I'm a little baffled on the idea of why in the world would Phaedra want to come back to a reality TV show that definitely sometimes put the women in a very peculiar type of position where they're being looked at as loud, brassy, brash, uh, silly, stupid, don't have no more compass, uh, they doing anything for a dollar, you know, sacrificing their uh, morality, and how to, to conduct themselves truly in public, in the public eye. But again, Bravo sanitizes other housewives of whatever state we're viewing it on or whatnot, uh, for lack of a better word. Uh, they want drama. They want senseless, mindless drama. And when you have set your eyes on the price of being an entertainer and you're looking at making, what, 500000 to to uh, $1 million a season, okay, who wouldn't want to do that? Uh, I wouldn't because I wouldn't want to be under that scrutiny and it's not like they're living, they're showing you living your uh, daily life trying to make ends meet or just living a soft cushioning life by being an entrepreneur and focusing on their brand, which is them, which is them, themselves really, that's their brand. Uh, no logic, no inner extra education, post-secondary education needed to go out there and act a total fool, if you want my opinion, just to get money. But, you know, there's people out there that just don't want to work uh, for another person. They want to try uh, and see what their talents range from and getting into certain um, entertainment sectors of the industry, uh, entertainment industry, I should say. So, in a sense, they do sacrifice their soul, literally, as well as figuratively, because, you know, fame and fortune and all that glitter and gold and the whole thing about, you know, you being rich, are you really? Uh, are you only, the only one out there that, are, that is rich? And are you rich in favor? Or are you rich in materialistic type things? So, it, it gives you a lot of information as well as knowledge to understand why these people act the way they do. Uh, they don't see themselves working for anybody. They don't see themselves working a nine to five. They just want to go on the talents or lack of talent that they do have and get into a lot of dramaless type, uh, we call it revenue streams or employment of living, uh, just to make it kind of clear cut. But I just realized, like, okay. Let me get back into this story and let me see if there's something different. Am I missing something? Because if we're talking about integrity or we're talking about livelihood, it's kind of fake on both sides. Phaedra being a lawyer, professional, career-driven woman, I don't understand why she would want to be into entertainment because she's a lawyer by nature. Uh, she went to school, got all her paperwork to uh credentialized herself as being 
you know, a real sought after or a real entertainment attorney for Atlanta, Georgia. And she probably kept real other states as well. And she put in a license for that particular state. And then she's a mortuary person. She has, she has a degree in that. And in a sense, to run her own business or get in partnership, which I thought she was with Willie Watkins. So, I mean, this woman has a lot of avenues career-wise, career choice-wise, that she can definitely elevate herself uh, to be fulfilled as well as, you know, good honorable careers that she's helping the community and herself. You know, does it pay quick, fast, in a hurry? No, it don't. It takes a lot of energy, a lot of time, and a lot of work. But I thought that's what she wanted to be, a respectable person in the community and not want to be a part of a reality show where it shows the very least of what you really are. Um, and you, it messes with your, your, uh, your demeanor as well as your character. So it just behooves me to try to understand this educated woman that's out here wanting to be a part of mindless drama entertainment. Other thing that I can see is probably the paycheck that she can secure herself on as long as she comes with drama. Uh, and I think she bit off the uh, apple a little bit too fast and swallowed and caused herself heartburn to where she can't even think about being coming back to Bravo Entertainment to serve as a housewife or any other type of format because they're really scared to touch her in a legalized way. Um, then you got Candy on the other hand. She's sitting there calling herself wanting to say, oh, she feels fate still don't have no remorse. She don't really care. And she could have ruined my career. But the same thing that could have destroyed your career, if it was true, you're condoning it. You're advertising it. You're making it a sensation where you're making books, uh, a good grip of loot uh, out there on something that you said could have been detrimental to you. So it's almost like a double-edged sword. I don't understand where you're coming from, Candy, but I understand how it could have affected you. So just getting back, Showbiz um, Cheat Sheet put out an article that read, uh, The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Why is Phaedra Parks No Longer a Part of the Bravo Franchise? Okay, and it's written by Bree Williams. She did it on yesterday, okay? Just getting around to it because I did try to enjoy my Labor Day as well. All right, but let's get on into the article. It reads, for six seasons, Stage Reports was a staple in the Real Housewives of Franchise. Now, here, I'm coming to you on my channel with the who, what, when, where, why, and lastly, how. How in the entertainment celebrity world of living, the individuals who is gracing the new spotlight today is going to be Phaedra Parks and uh, the reason why Candy don't want to see her ever on Real Housewives of Atlanta again, as well as probably any other shows, you know. But like I said, getting back to the article, it read, after joining the hit Bravo series back in 2010, Parks had a good run until everything around her came crashing down. Phaedra Parks eventually found herself fired, not uh, she resigned, but let's emphasize on the word fired from the Real Housewives of Atlanta after making a false and shocking allegation about her fellow classmate. Uh, it all started with a rumor. The Real Housewives of Atlanta has had their fair share of unexpected bombshells over the years. While the show definitely keeps fans on their toes with the constant drama, no one was prepared for what took place between Phaedra Parks and the Bravo franchise, okay? During season nine, four-part reunion, the shocking topic of Candy Burris and her husband, Todd Tucker, Tucker wanted to drug Portia Williams and take advantage of her sexually, was brought up, okay? And uh, they give the old clip from when they were, uh, it was during the reunion. I think it was season, uh, not, not season, but it was part three, where they really got into it, and part four just brought it on home, Okay. But so y'all go and check that out if you dare to. Uh, it's on you, of course. It says, while Williams wanted Burris to confess to this revelation after calling out her fellow castmate, she then turned to Phaedra Parks to back up her claim. If anybody saw that uh, video, Portia was just up there trying to drill, can try to say, no, I know, I know, I know it's true and just that and third. So she brought out her secret weapon. Her secret weapon was Phaedra Parks. 
Of course, Fraser Paul started looking stupid, like, how did I get drawn into this? And was this supposed to go down like that? That's my pun, not in the article. Uh, back to the article, it says, though Candy Birds did not ever wanted to drug a person, it was soon revealed that Fraser Paul was the one who initially, who initially spread this rumor by telling it to Portia. Okay, although it was later revealed that Bravo producers didn't have the footage of Park sharing this rumor with Williams due to Burris' threats, it all came to light during the four-part finale. So uh, basically, Ken had got her uh, lawyers involved, and she, I guess, petitioned, or she sent a cyst and deceased letter to Bravo Entertainment saying, you know, defamation of character, defamation of character is going on. She's putting out false narratives out there on me, and anybody that knows me who's been around me for years, they know, hey, I don't drink and I don't do drugs. So what's going on with that? So I understood why Bravo did not want to put their sales into that legality uh, where it was stir up, but they would lose money. OK, by uh, hanging on to Phaedra Parks. But going back to the article, it said after going back and forth, Phaedra Parks soon apologized for her actions. But the damage had already been done as Portia Williams and Candy Burris were left in tears. Phaedra and I, it had escalated over the years, but to repeat and say I would drug somebody, it's just a multiple level to that. Burris said during the finale, she as she as someone who knows me knows I don't do drugs. But then as an attorney, why would you repeat that someone drugs somebody? You should understand that drugging somebody while they're drinking and taking them home is great. Y'all accuse me of being a Effing rapist. Uh, stop, Jaden. Jaden. Uh, and it says, though this rumor was probably the most shocking and dramatic moment in the history of Real, Real Housewives of Atlanta, things didn't get better for Phaedra Parks following the reunion. Soon after the finale aired on Bravo, TMZ reported that Phaedra's or Mrs. Parks' allegations were so out of line that producers decided to cut ties with her all together and fire the well-known attorney. Now, you see, when Harvey Levin get involved and he tried to dissect what was said and what was done, that could have been a very egregious type of uh, indictment that could have been put on Portia if Candy actually really went to pushing and, and bearing that gas, pressing on that gas to get fired, uh, Portia debarred. You know what I'm saying? That really definitely would have been taken money out of uh, Phaedra's son's mouths and their livelihood because that's what Phaedra do on an everyday basis is an attorney. She uh, legalized and she goes to courts and bats for other entertainers in the business. At least that's what she told us uh, as far as how she gets down in the legal world. Of course, we know she lost two cases. Uh, one with Sheree. With Phil, and the other one was with uh, was it Bobby Brown or somebody? It was another, maybe it was T.I. No, it's probably Bobby Brown, I believe. She lost that case, so Frazier hadn't really been a well known uh practitioner in the attorney side of law here in Atlanta because she was, she'll be winning a lot more cases or at least in the midst of trying to win cases. But like I said, I never really heard of her until she became a household name uh, for, for the, from the Bar Bravo franchise. Okay, but going back to the article, it says, uh, while well, Phaedra Park seems sincere as she apologized to Candy Burris and Portia Williams for spreading the rumor, the reality star revealed that she has no regrets for her actions. Okay, and that part, not having any remorse or empathy uh, and sympathy for a person that you blatantly lied on or you basically carrying a bone from what one doorstep to the next. You really did harm in your profession because any pro a professional career field, like I am in the medical field, so, and I have a lot of other training and things of that nature, but I took an oath to not do any harm to people that I'm serving in the community. And that's in the human service field. Once you get to a, a master or doctorate type level and your um, your career choice is basically um, making you or mandating you to follow certain rules and regulations, that's what you have to do. You're supposed to not do harm to your clients. And that was a very egregious thing that Frazier took part in. By definitely uh, 
talking and gossiping and putting it out there and, you know, stirring the pot and, you know, getting things to a, getting them to a place where it could have been very negative impacted upon Phaedra's livelihood. So in a sense, Candy kind of did her a favor uh, by not pressing issues to take her livelihood away, which is, you know, her attorney license, or, you know, licensure. Uh, so, I, you know, I commend Candy definitely for not doing that. But I'm like to add injury to insult. You're making money off the thing that you said that you didn't have any awareness of or that you didn't participate in. Uh, you have a sex dungeon, even though it's for entertainment. And you make it very clear it's for entertainment. It's just like, OK, when you go just for edification or just playing the devil's advocate, what if you touch inappropriately one of your dancers, you know, and then they make a claim against you? Well, guess what, Candy? You are a part of and you're soliciting uh, sales, monetary sales for people to come to watch you do these, to me, improper type of touchy-feely ways and things. So I hope you got your ducks in a row and I hope you got your legal team because you definitely could be looked at somebody if they want to say sue you for you touch them inappropriately, they could say sexual harassment, you know, by their employer. So, you know, you really need you you raking in money and you actually gonna have another tour started here sometime in October. You're gonna have two shows. I don't know if it's here in Miami or here in somewhere else, but it's uh celebrating the Halloween um season coming up. Because I think it's on the 20th or the 28th. But it's just to the fact that, you know, you're kind of putting yourself out there legal-wise, too, to get done back to you what Phaedra had did to you and you were disgusted about. So that's just a play on words. But, you know, you're going to have to be very careful, Candy. Like I said, I like you. I don't like some of the things you do and you take part in. And that's when I have to do videos and, and uh, correcting you, you know. Uh, how I once saw you and how you were prevailing. And then you start doing this other crap. That's just something that your son and daughters are not going to want to really be viewing about you. You know what I'm saying? So um, just going back to the article that was my edification. Doing an exclusive interview with people soon after season nine finale aired. Parts open up about the bum share rel rel relevation. Uh, explaining that she is a firm believer in everything happens for a reason. What's meant to happen will happen. The reality starts said. They say you're set up to step up for the next uh, thing, right? I know that I'm fortunate. I know that good things happen to me because I have my feet on frugal ground. I can't regret anything, but I know it was destined to happen. So, no, I really felt that um, Portia, not Portia, uh, Phaedra felt that she was you know, rolling, and she was trying to bring as much drama, and people, you know, having their names, her names in their mouths, giving her extra speed, and so she can drive this machine, but the machine took over her and destroyed her, so I'm like, okay, I can understand, and it makes a little bit more clearer to me, but then on the other spectrum, I'm looking at Candy, you're making all this money, you know, finessing everybody, talking about the dungeon, when you basically was like, you know, that's not my character. That's not what I do. And now you in this touch of Philly situation, having all these exotic dancers as a, of entertainment that you provide. But it's almost like you're the pot calling the kettle black. You're uh, actually contributing and monetarily benefiting off something you said was a detriment to your character. So I don't think I'm saying that you can't be careful. Be careful for what you try to put out there, but yet, you know, uh, you're doing the same thing in a way of promoting something that you said you didn't have, you didn't uh, uh, took take part in, but you have the sex dungeon and it's definitely thriving and you got all these women riding here, uh, gyrating on stage and touch and feeling one another and this, that and the third. So I could understand a little bit better. And, you know, I probably will not be speaking on this subject again because it's just two faces I'm looking at and both sides have a valid point. But will it be resolved? Will Frazier ever come back uh, with the, to the Bravo franchise? I think not because she's a legal risk. Uh, she's a very big 
legality for them because they don't know how she would probably get down. Would she think about us through entertainment that employs her to not cross these barriers again? Or will she actually cross them and keep putting speed to it? Uh, throwing caution to the wind, not thinking about anybody else but herself. But that's all I had, another tw or twist to it because I can't. I saw it come back up and I was like, okay, let me read a little bit more to see. You know, did I do that other video I did on her way back when, when the whole story came out, Frazier wanted to come back. So I'll back and say, Frazier, you got a career choice. You got two career choices going for you. Stop trying to be in the entertainment world. It's not for you. It causes you more detriment than you would making money off of it because you're going to have to hire your own attorney to probably try to get you out of these little infractions you've put yourself into. But that's all. With that said, I am going to close out this video. I'll be back for Girls Trip, the seventh installment, and hopefully that'll, they'll be getting down somewhat. But anyway, y'all be blessed. I'll see you next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.